Hi folks, Nigel from Ambling Trails. So today you find me on the shores of Derwentwater in the Lake District. So this particular lake is three miles long and about a mile wide. And I think the average depth is about 24 feet. So in actual fact, it's not particularly deep for one of the lakes in the Lake District. Now there is a kind of official route round Derwentwater that sticks very close to the shoreline. But that means you can't actually see the best of Derwentwater, which is almost seeing it from on high. So I'm taking what I'm kind of calling the high road or the high route. But in reality, it's probably more of a mid route because it doesn't hit the tops of the mountains but it's about halfway down, so it's a bit of a compromise in terms of height. But, enjoyment terms, it's probably the best route. So yeah, stick with me, and we shall see the best sights of doing water. Let's talking? Yes, let's get walking. This is something I've never seen before where the water's that high you can't actually use the landing stages to get on the uh, on the boats so here's a useful map so we're currently here near where the launches launch themselves and we're gonna follow the path near to the water's edge but then we are crossing over the road and we're kind of halfway up on here and going to Asnes Bridge, surprise view. And then we're kind of cutting down here to get to Grange, round Grange. And then we're following a route that's kind of halfway up, coming down this way to Porton Scale and then back into Keswick. So over here we have Derwent Island and a guy named Joseph Pocklington bought it in 1778 and would you believe it not only did he build a house but he built a fort and every year he used to hold a regatta um, and he challenged the people of Keswick to attack his fort and he would fire cannons at them however the island was eventually sold to the National Trust in 1920 and you can get onto it but only five days a year and even then you have to go by canoe. So this is John Ruskin who said that Friars Crag was the third most beautiful place in the world. I'm not sure he told us what 1 and 2 was. So behind me we have Friars Crag which is what we just visited and it's called Friars Crags because that's where the monks used to launch their boats to get over to St Herbert's Island which is kind of right over there. That was a place of pilgrimage for um, the monks. St. Herbert was around the 7th century, I believe, um, a hermit on that particular island, which when I think how many, what the population of England was in the 7th century, then it probably would have been pretty remote. Um, he certainly would have been a hermit, probably just even existing near Derwentwater. Anyhow, that was his choice. And that's how Fryer's Crag got its name. Right, we're now going to head round the lake. Right, let's talk in, let's get walking. So in essence, we're moving away from the sort of standard route of following round Lake um, Derwent Water, which is that way. We're going to take this path here that will take us to the road which we'll cross over and then get on the side of the hills so we get the views. So as you can see I'm walking through the woods 
that it's actually the path is alongside the road but you can't see the road but you can hear it occasionally so it's still a pleasant walk and then we get to the sign here that's telling us there's a uh, car park and we just need to go up to the road here and cross over into the car park and then we're on the side of the hill so we can start walking and gaining some height so yeah you can park here if you're a National Trust member obviously for free our thing here is just making sure we ignore the route out we follow the footpath here so yeah we're going towards Ashness Bridge there you go, 1 mile 40 minutes which may seem slow yeah, parts of the path are a little bit sketchy so there we have the peak of Warlock Crag so you could come to the car park I showed you if you was looking to do a Wainwright that way for Warlock Crag but we're concentrating on Ashnesh Bridge Just noticed something. Yeah, notice it's now saying Asnes Bridge, one mile, 55 minutes. I'm sure the other one said one mile, 40 minutes. I seem to be going backwards in time. That's very strange. Yeah, we're going this way for sure. Get some grand views up at the top of Catgill. But it's right what it says on the cam. It's a really steep climb. Particularly bad when it's wet. However, we're going to cross over the bridge and have a quick look at the waterfall as well. So we're going to emerge out of these trees in a minute and if my calculations are right we should start to see the lake In fact, I can see the lake Can you see the lake? And that's what I love about um, this particular route now We're just high enough to get good shots of the, um, of the lake and just as importantly the, the hills over there as well The great thing of this path is it keeps bringing you to viewpoints. So one of the problems now is there's almost too much to look at as you're going along this track. It's just so beautiful. So this actually says the Pankhurst views, views as in trees. Unfortunately it's very difficult to read. I will try and find something out about it. So that's our next destination, Surprise View. And we'll get over the bridge first. So to get up to Surprise View we do need to use the road um, but that's okay it's a very minor road you might meet the postman but not many cars right we're nearly there now In the far distance you can see Bassenfweet Lake now. There you go, you can just see it a little bit better now.
And I think there's people in the pool. Yep, there's some people down there having a spa day. <laughs> Meanwhile, No matter how many times I come to Surprise View, it's still a surprise. It's fantastic. this walk and the rain that we've had recently all helps, all contributes and of course it's all going to do with water. So just so you're under no illusion it does get a bit tricky going downhill but I prefer that than being on the uh, flat road going round Derwent water this is a lot more exciting. So the path brings us down um, onto this road here, which is, and I'm actually now opposite the Borrowdale Hotel. I'm just catching them, um, putting up their putting up their Christmas decorations, which I think is great. Now you can cross over the other side going that way. Um, well, I'm not a big fan of it and I'm a bit worried that it's still maybe underwater because we've had a lot of rain recently. So I'm taking the road and there is a reasonable path on the side and a bit further along you can actually get over the wall and walk along the riverbank. But the thing I'm mainly aiming for is a place called Grange and that of course is because there's a calf there and it's a good halfway point. So next stop, the calf. I'm now on the bridge at Grange and it's about a 10 minute walk from Borodell to Grange so it's not too bad at all. I just remember there's actually two caps in um, Grange so hey you've got a bit of a choice. There's one near the river which I'll show you as we're going past and then there's another one which is the one I prefer but I think they're both equally as good. So look out for this path. Don't miss this path. So we're now on the path going up um, towards Maiden Moor and Cat Bells. And this path is going to take us kind of midway um, in height. So we're not going at the top of the mountains, 
and we're not on the shore of Durant Water but like I say it's somewhere in between however obviously you have got the option that you could go up to the top of Cat Bells if you so wish and you get some good views there but you will equally get those views without climbing to such height equally before we go up to this part you could have taken the route down by the shore as well even catch uh, one of the Derwent cruisers however for now we're going to continue on this path and enjoy the views again so if we take the path to the left then that would take us up a path that goes up to the top and you end up kind of midway between Cat Bells and Maiden Moor and in fact that above is the ridge line that connects the two however we're going to go this way because like I say we're not, we're not taking the ridge line we're not taking the high road we're taking the mid road so we're now on the path that we were mainly looking for. This goes all the way along, halfway down till the end of Cat Bells. Um, behind you start to get the views of Derwent Water. And directly behind me now, right across the other side, is Surprise View. And this is one of the reasons why it's best kind of going up on that side. Um, because surprise view is definitely a better view um, than possibly from this angle but hey we've done it both ways now now there's a house with a view So I'll come down this path, don't go to the sign on the right, go up the path on the left. Like, follow these people. So as we get to the end of the path, simple as crossing the road. Just remembering you're on a bit of a bend. There you go. We're going that way. So this is where the two um, paths meet now. So we've met up with the low level path. Um, at this point it's not actually on the shores of Durant Water. Um, it's in some woods and you're probably, I don't know, a third of a mile or so away from the edge of the water. And in fact, you don't get to it again until um, one of the marinas further along. Where well, there's another uh, cap as well, if you so wish. It's actually quite a good one because you can easily overlook the lake. Um, and not that many people use it. Right, onward we go. There you go, you can take one of these for a walk. So this Nichols End uh, Marina, and the cab's closed, which is a bit of a disappointment for me. But anyhow, hope you've enjoyed it so far. We've still got a little way to go. But just a reminder, if you can please subscribe, I'd appreciate that. Or share with like-minded people. And of course, don't forget, thumbs up for the dogs. Right, let's keep going, like I say, Probably just a mile or two more to go. Right, onward. That's now Tynus at Keswick is half a mile down this track.
Here we go, E Ancient Kissing Gate. Just have to capture the squeak of that. So we've done round about 12 and a half miles and about 1500 feet of climb and it's taken me about five and a half hours including my coffee and cake stop so that should give you some clues. As I say thanks for joining me and I'll see you on the next one.